Hey guys, I am Rob. I'm Mike, and this is the Rob and Mike Show. Welcome. I hope everybody had a great Christmas. And uh, Mike, how was your Christmas? Fantastic, fantastic. A lot of, a lot of food, a little, little bit of drinking, a lot of family, and that's what it's all about. Well, I gave my diet readings the day off. <laughs> so I ate everything in sight, and uh, I was waiting to go into a coma, but uh, fortunately it didn't happen. Fortunately, I didn't yeah. Now, um, my fiance and I decided to only give each other one big present. Okay, she got me a trampoline. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I guess it's the thought that counts. Well, we should be doing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks. Today we have kind of a quirky subject. It's called the magic pill debate, and this was inspired by a meeting that I attended, kind of like a a mini conference I went to about 10 years ago at a Center for Independent Living. And I can't remember exactly why we were all there, but I remember that we it was a big cross-section of disabilities represented there. There were people from the deaf community, uh, people who were blind, and you know, people with congenital disabilities, so on down the line. And the thing I remember most about it is we were watching this video Okay. about this guy who was in a car accident, ended up having a spinal cord injury, and he was paralyzed from the neck down. And we don't like to use the word inspirational a lot because often it's used in a condescending way. But I have to tell you that I was truly inspired by this guy. I mean, since his accident, he got married, fathered two kids, Worked a full-time job and drove a van. I'm thinking, wow, that was that's pretty awesome, you know. But at the end of the video, he said something that I thought was really weird. He said, you know, if there was a magic pill that I could take that would get rid of my disability, I wouldn't take it because I'm proud to have a disability. I'm part of a disability culture or words to that effect. And he said a couple of other things too. And I remember not yelling, but I said, <laughs> I said very loudly, oh, bull, you know the rest, okay? And this kicked off this huge, what I now call the magic pill debate. And what bothered me about what he said was, you know, do I have to fall in love with my disability in order to be adjusted? I don't think so. I think that it's okay, I mean, to, to point out the negative things about having a disability, you can do that and still be adjusted. The two are not mutually exclusive. You know, what's wrong with saying, you know, I've done X, Y, and Z, since I've had my football injury. But what I don't like, I still hate bed sores, okay? I hate UTIs. I hate inaccessibility. That doesn't mean I'm maladjusted just because I point those things out. What do you think, Mike? I think you're 100% right. And both Rob and I are, are able to talk about this subject because we both have a spinal cord injury uh, from years ago. Um, and we're in wheelchairs right now, so you know, we, we can we'll have, a, have a, I mean, this, this is a good conversation to have when you're talking about it. Yeah. When you have somebody here who's uh, not in a wheelchair, it's kind of harder to have that conversation. I think it's yeah. a good conversation that we can have. Um, I agree with you. Um, you know, for me, with, with regards to that the debate is, um, I'm proud of the things I've accomplished from 1990 to 2020, almost 2024. Sure. And over the course of the last 33 years, um, overcoming the obstacles that I've overcome, um, learning patience, uh, learning how to deal with um, with people and their um, how they treat people with disabilities and overcome that. I'm proud of where I've gotten to, but you better believe that there's a pill right now that says you can get up right now and your disability is over. I'm taking that pill. Well, so sure. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that the guy in the video that you were talking about a moment ago is wrong. Yeah. Nobody's wrong in their decision. I, I'm a firm believer in that. People make decisions, 
on a lot of different things, and I don't think anybody's wrong on their decision. Okay. Um, I don't think he's wrong. I, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that saying something like that or something that doesn't exist is uh, he's, he's using all of his uh, his mind at the moment. Yeah. You know, uh, he maybe didn't think it through. But for me, I'd be taking the bill. But that does not that does not uh, diminish the accomplishments I I feel I've made. Right, exactly. And notice he said it would take away the disability now. So in other words, all the things that he's gained in terms of wisdom or the things he's learned about life and the world thanks to the disability, all of that would still be there. Correct. So what I would challenge him on is what is the downside of losing your disability? What would be the downside? And when we had this, and I did post that question at that meeting, and there were a few people, it was interesting, a few people that had congenital disabilities, okay, that, that said, well, you know, uh, there could be a situation where they couldn't replace the, the Social Security the SSI, because maybe there would be a situation where they couldn't get the right education or something to get to get them a job that would replace the income. And I, I thought, well, I don't know about that, you know. But but you know, I mean, that was a that was an interesting point of view, I guess. And kind of following up what you said, you know, it's easy to talk about a magic pill. When you know the magic hill doesn't really exist, yeah, yeah. you know. For all we know, the guy—if there really was a pill—he might be running people over <laughs> to get to the front of the line, right? You know what I mean? And yeah. it's, it's also important to to point out this isn't just about people in wheelchairs. Okay, this is about people who, you know, any disability. Right? You know, I mean, I'm sure that there are. I'm sure that people who are deaf. Okay may look at this differently because the deaf community is a, uh, by and large not everybody but is a, is a group that by and large see themselves as a separate culture yes part of it is because they have a separate language and they would not want to be quote unquote cured many of them would see that as you know they're losing their culture were being wrongly assimilated into the able-bodied culture, and I can understand that. Oh, so, I, like I said, there's no wrong answer. Right, um, right. You're right. There are different groups uh, within within a uh, within the, the entire disability community. Sure. Different groups that would look at it a lot differently. I totally agree with that. You yeah. know, there, there's somebody asked me one time about it's not the same question kind of similar question you know they said would you would you go into surgery right now if there was a 99 percent chance that you come out of it like you were prior going in i said what's the other one percent well you would lose everything you have and i said i would never do so uh, i would never go i i, I I'm, I'm i'm happy with where i've gotten to i've worked hard to get uh from from moving nothing from my neck down to where i'm at right now i wouldn't even take that one percent chance well, a nurse said to me one time, she said, you know, we don't see a lot of people with spinal cord injuries at your age, but looking at you, um, you're like a miracle compared to the train wrecks we see. You know, at this age, most people have a laundry list of, you know, just physical problems and you know, emotional whatever he said he, uh, she said for your age you're in very good shape so for that reason i wouldn't do it either right no, no way. Way. I mean, don't get me wrong it would be great to you know be able to stand up and walk or go play golf sure go do the things with my friends and i mean i've got good enough friends that they bring me in them they, they, if they're going they demand that i go with them so they, they make sure that I can get where they go. Well, that's good. Um, so that's I'm, good. I'm very fortunate with that. But it would be great to be able to 
do the things that they're doing. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like one thing, it's kind of weird. You know, putt putt golf. You really can't do that from a wheelchair. It's very difficult. But they have it. Yeah, it's amazing to me that no one has developed an accessible putt putt golf course. I don't know of any. Although you do. Not as much demand for it. Uh, <laughs> but getting back, to, getting back to the issue, though, um, I think sometimes the, and I, and I told you this before, sometimes the hardcore advocates, and God love them, okay, they're on the front lines Absolutely. of enforcing the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act, and doing all the hard work, meeting with the politicians and all of that. But I think sometimes they get hypersensitive to the concept of pity, that how pity or is, is viewed by the able-bodied population. I understand that, okay? But just talking about the negative aspects of your disability is not pity. No, okay, I mean, that's just, it's reality, man. It doesn't mean you're not adjusted, right? You know, just because you're, you're not, you know, Sally Sunshine, 24 hours a day. I'm not sure I know anybody who's Sally no, Sunshine. No, nobody is. That's right. Nobody, sure or not. That's right. Nobody is. So, I mean, it's uh, it, it was it was an interesting debate. There was a lot of uh, a lot of discussion. There were a couple people who started out saying, "Oh no, no, I wouldn't give this up. I'm proud." Kind of like the guy in the video. But then when we started talking about, you know, it's not time travel, it's you would lose the disability right where you're at. So everything you've gained, okay, you would still have it. You know, you would still have all the all the knowledge, all the experience, all that stuff, you would still have it. And then they started to think, oh yeah, that's right. It would be cool not to have to have you know, whatever it is, you know, uh, be blind or have rheumatoid arthritis or whatever it was, or be an amputee and so Sure, they live, they learned to live with it, yeah. And and I don't know, how do you see, how, how do you look at the concept of disability culture? Uh, myself, I've never really bought into it. I, I agree with you. I, I really, I, you know, you see people, um, who, who are part of a, a, a team? Uh, I, I think like a, a men's basketball team, a okay. wheelchair basketball. Yeah, team. yeah. I want to say that's not, it's almost like a little fraternity. It's like a little culture. They hang out. They're hanging out together, doing things together. Yeah. I never really got involved in the in the. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm in a wheelchair, so I'm gonna go hang out with everybody in the wheelchair. Right. I've got my friends. Yeah. Doesn't mean I can't be your friend too. Yeah. But it's not gonna be me hanging out with. With a whole bunch of other people with disabilities, it's just I mean, like I said, are you going to be friends? Absolutely, yeah. But there's no reason just to say, yeah. There's no reason to isolate, right, from society. Yeah, I mean that's that's where society has gotten it wrong you know, in a lot of cases. I think it's so true. Yeah. Um, why isolate people um, and segregate people from society? Why why do that to yourself? Right. You know. So so I I agree with what you're saying. Is is that whole uh, um, disability culture? I I don't buy it. No, I, uh, yeah, you know, like you can't go into a restaurant and, and order disability cuisine. <laughs> or aside, aside from the deaf community, we don't have our own language. So, you know, is it, is it really a culture? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just think, yeah, there are things about any disability that, preclude the able-bodied population from totally understanding. Okay, in that respect, yeah, maybe. Okay, but to say that we're a culture and it's gonna be like genocide if we lose our wheelchairs, and I just think it's a bridge too far. Right, I, agree. I, I just, I, agree. I don't know. I totally agree. It's a good topic though. Well, I'll, say, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, is I, Anybody who who comes across this video, I'd love to hear from you. Absolutely, um, you know, whether, whether it's we'd love to know call, your calling opinion. in, calling in here, sure. You know, uh, you know finding our finding our uh, uh, email address on our website, um, doing doing where you know 
let us know. I mean, yeah, I, well, here's the beauty. That's, that's, yeah. that's one thing I want this to become is more interactive. I would, definitely, I would love that people calling in saying, love what you guys did or hate what you guys did. Yeah, um, yeah. Or uh, an opinion on what, what, what the topic was. Yeah, we don't just want to be preachers from the pulpit here. We right, want to exactly. be interactive and let, you know, let, give you guys a, a topic, give you something to chew on, and you know, let us know what you think. Right. Actually, we were just talking prior to, to today's show is, you know, bringing in some guest speakers moving forward. So Absolutely, yeah. You know, maybe in January, there'll be three of us here on this panel talking a little okay. bit. And, uh, you know, to whether, whether it's other people from the disability community or politicians or or uh, people uh, that, that want, want to get involved uh, as volunteers, whatever. I mean, we want to get people involved with, with what we're doing and uh, involved in the community and, and uh, doing some good work. I think any time, like with politicians, any time you get involved and have a discussion with people who are in a position of power, okay, it's, it's great because you, you, want to, you want to make them aware of things that maybe they weren't aware of before. And it's going to help them make future decisions that would, you know, benefit everybody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's great. One last thing I do want to mention, um, very, very important. Uh, we're coming up to the end of the, I think I mentioned this last month, coming up to the end of the public health emergency of COVID-19 and everybody who is on Medicaid uh, medical assistance yeah, is going to need to renew uh, their Medicaid. And without that renewal paperwork being sent into the county assistance office or being done on Compass, uh, the website Compass, um, you are in danger of potentially losing services. So we don't want that to happen. Um, let's get, if you see that uh, letter from the uh, 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 state indicating that needs to be done, please, please get that stuff in and let's, uh, you know, you know, keep everybody active and, and eligible with services. Okay. All right. Well, that was great. He's Rob. He's Mike. So this is the Rob and Mike Show. Awesome. See you next month. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.